Hello and welcome back. I am Miss Kelly. This is sixth grade ELA and we are still on the wonderful novel Hatchet about survival. And so I hope you guys have been reading. You should be reading. We should be up to chapter four by now. If you haven't, you know, make sure you read up to chapter four for this lesson. All right, this is lesson five. All right, lesson five says, how does an author develop a character? So we've been talking about that. Gary Paulson has been very specific in the way that he provides us information and insight on the character of Brian, the main character in this novel. And so, but we know that he does it on purpose. He develops his character, not just in a one dimensional way, but he allows us to know not just his actions, but his thoughts as well. So the lesson objective, repeat after me, I will. Very good. I will continue to gather evidence about Brian using annotations on sticky notes, students practice writing claims with evidence to analyze how Gary Paulson develops the character of Brian. We are going to write claims. Ooh, I love that. Going to write some claims. So that's going to be your opinion about something. All right, so how does the text help you to understand? It says you have spent time using annotations. You know, we've been using our sticky notes to do that. It says annotations to gather evidence about Brian, and you have used this evidence to discuss how this evidence helps you to understand him. So it's not enough to just know what he's doing, but you have to get this information so you can understand why he's doing what he's doing, why he's thinking these thoughts about divorce, why he was so panicked about the pilot, but how he still is able to manage, you know, surviving the plane crash. All those things help us to understand Brian. Today we will continue gathering evidence about Brian as you read chapter four of Hatchet independently. You guys are still reading independently, right? Right, all right. Practice writing claims with evidence to analyze how Gary Paulson develops Brian's character. You will need a copy of Hatchet, 10 sticky notes, your reading journal handout, and a CER paragraph frame handout. And it's all in your student materials. So we're gonna read the rest of chapter four independently, starting with paragraph or the paragraph that begins with Brian opens his eyes. So we read some of this chapter already. We're gonna kind of skim around. You guys should be reading on your own, but I'm gonna read a little bit towards the back of the chapter. As we know, again, he has survived the plane crash. Last time we read, he was being ate up by mosquitoes. It was just really, really disgusting. He was going through a lot after surviving that awful, awful plane crash. All right, it says, as you read, make annotations on your sticky notes when Brian's words, thoughts, or actions help or hinder his chances of survival. Let's dive into that a little bit. His actions help his survival when he do things that helps him live and, you know, make it through this ordeal. Things that he may do that might hinder his chances of survival are things that might lead to his death, his demise, him being injured or hurt in another way. So think about that as we read through this novel. All right, so again, as we read, you need to know or think about, do Brian's words, actions, or thoughts help or hinder his chances of survival? Again, think about when the plane crashed in the lake. He was screaming. Remember those animal screams? He didn't even know it was him, but he did have enough wherewithal to allow himself to get out of that plane, jerk loose his, his windbreaker, and press his way to the top of that lake and survive. So is that an action that hindered or helped his survival? What do you think? It helped. It helped him. His will and fight that he has that you know is within him is actually something that's actually going to help him to survive. You have to have that. So again, in the CER paragraph frame, we're going to talk about a claim, which is what do I know based on the text? These are the things that you need to ask yourself. Also, what is my response to the question? The question could be, could be whatever the question we're asking, we want you to flip that into a statement. All right, evidence. How do I know this? The evidence is what you go back and directly relate back to the text. It's the annotations you've been making with the page number and the chapters. You're going to use it. That's how you know it. And then what is or what in the text tells me this? So that's the details. 
And so you can say something like, in the text it says, and then you state what the text says. You could also use this frame. For example, and then you list what the text says. So those examples of evidence. And now let's talk about reasoning. Reasoning is why does the evidence support the claim? So you have your claim, you have your evidence, but you have to explain why this supports the claim. Here are some sentence frames you can use. This shows that, and then you state what it shows. This means that. And then you list what it means. From this, I can conclude, and then you state what it is you can conclude. So again, if you have all of your annotations and all the work that you've been doing up to this point, this should be so easy for you to do. All right, so here's what I just read. It's a little bit bigger for you guys to see. Again, it's in your student materials that you have. And so you should be able to pull that out and utilize that as you begin writing. All right, so now, pretend that you think that Brian's words, actions, thoughts, or end thoughts hinder his chances of survival. You think about that for a minute. Pretend that you think that his words, actions, and thoughts hinder his chance, chances of survival. Write your claim in the practice section of your handbook. So let's go back. Let's talk about his thoughts. He keeps thinking about this secret. He keeps thinking about this divorce. It's something that's heavy and is negative. Is a negative thought something that's going to hinder or aid your survival? It's going to hinder. So that's a direct example of something that hinders your survival. You can use that. You can use whatever you want, but that's just my example. So his thoughts about this divorce and this secret and how it weighs him down. Remember, it even talks about it in the, the book about how his eyes get a little misty, for lack of a better term. And so he's been crying. He's really, really upset. You do not need thoughts that make you upset when you're trying to survive. Your mind needs to be focused on the task at hand. So again, I want you guys to write your claim in the practice section of your handout. What would your claim be? Hmm. What do I know based on the text? What do you know that he's done that hinders his survival? And then what is your response to that question? Next, your evidence. How do you know it? What in the text tells you that? So you have to go back to your annotations and see what you have. So again, you can say in the text, using my example, it says that Brian thinks about the divorce. He thinks about the secret. And it is a constant thought that he's always you know, running around in his mind. And so I could use that as my evidence. I would go back actually to the very thing, even the secret. Remember we talked about that in chapter four, the secret when he talked about seeing his mom in the car with his dad. So I could go back and say on page 30, I could say, for example, it says that Brian saw this and more, saw the secret and saw more later. But the memory came in pieces, came in scenes like this, Terry smiling. Brian looking over his head to see the station wagon and his mother sitting with the man, the time and temperature clock, the front wheel of his bike, the short blonde hair of the man, the white shirt of the man, the hot hate slices of the memory were exact. The secret. So that would be my evidence. And then my reasoning, again, why does the evidence support this claim? This shows that it is something that angers him. He uses the word hot hate slices of the memory. It's heavy. It's not something that's going to help this survival. It's going to handle it. So that's my example. What's yours? What actions do you think he's taken up to this point that has hindered his survival? I can't wait to hear and see. All right, so go back to the claim that you wrote in the practice section of the handout. Go to your annotations to find evidence for this claim write the evidence for this claim. So again, make a claim, use your annotations to support as evidence, and then state your reasoning. This is where you interpret what it is you're picking. So you're not just picking something just to be picking it. You pick something that you really feel supports your claim, and you're able to convey that message in your writing. 
All right, so in your reading journal, your reading journal is here. It says respond to the question with a formal argument using a claim and evidence. Does the setting of the novel have a positive or negative influence on Brian's chances of survival? Ooh, I love that question. I love it. That's the second part of this particular handout, your journal handout. So you are to write a claim and support your claim with at least one piece of text evidence. Well, if I was to use an example we read earlier about the mosquitoes that were gnawing at you, right? And so we know that he has some wounds, he's been injured, and if he's spitting and coughing out bugs and he can't even hardly breathe, that has to be a situation that is just not conducive to you thinking about surviving. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like an awful existence. And I know that would be a good example. So that's just mine. What is yours? Again, think about the setting. He's in the woods. Anybody else that would have survived a plane crash in a urban setting, someone would have seen it. Someone would call an ambulance. They would call 911. Paramedics would be there. He would be able to get to a hospital and get assistance. You can't do that because he's in the Canadian woods. That definitely, in my mind, is a negative influence on his chances of survival. But again, that's my idea. What is yours? You may think it, that it's different. You may think that it's a positive. So you put down what you think and write it in your journal handout. Okay, so this lesson is now at the end. It says, in this lesson, you learn how Brian responds after the crash. You also practiced using sticky notes to make annotations and writing claims that are supported with text evidence. I do want to let you guys know that we're not doing all this just to keep you busy. We're doing this for a purpose. Remember, at the end of this lesson, you have a culminating writing task. And you have all of this information filled out, all of this evidence, all of these claims, all of this information and reasoning is going to help you write and articulate an excellent essay is going to explain if you think Brian's actions hindered or helped his survival. I enjoyed you today. I hope you learned something and I can't wait to see you until next time. Have a great day.